Today we're going to look at a few general topics surrounding DNS. So, what happens when our little gamer guy here decides to reach out to the internet and go to a website? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is your PC is going to make an internal request to what's called a host file, and it's going to check to see, does it already have a URL to IP address association? Basically, have I been there yet? Now, if that fails, next thing we're going to do is make what's called an external request. Now, this is going to happen over port 53, and it's going to send down to our LAN WAN router. And what's going to happen is through firewall rules or some internal setting on the device, it's going to check to see, do I have anything that says that I have an internal DNS server running on my local area network? Now, an example of this is like a Pi hole, Raspberry Pi running some software that basically handles these DNS requests. Now, if it does, and we have the request on hand, that'll be sent back to the PC and life moves on. However, if it doesn't, the router is then going to make an external request out to the internet, of which I'll cover here in a later lesson, and depending on what happens, it will get a DNS response. Now, there are a few things you want to keep in mind here when looking at this. First of all, there are basically three stages in the request order. First one, local host file. Second is your LAN DNS server, as I mentioned, and finally, your WAN DNS servers. Few pitfalls locally in your host file, you're subjected to possible DNS poisoning. You can have private records, or if you're offline for a long time and then you come back online and you have an outdated request, weird things can happen there. Now, with a LAN DNS service, you can also be subjected to DNS poisoning, but another issue is connectivity if your LAN goes down. Uh, but that kind of leads to more issues. Now, thirdly, the WAN DNS server, a few more of the same issues, but you can have weird redirect things that can happen. Of course, weird connectivity breaks between DNS hosting providers and things like that. And of course, they are all public records, so if there's a mistake somewhere out there, you might accidentally propagate that back into your system. Now, to keep things simple, basically, there can be self-hosted services or servers that you run. Now, a few things you want to keep in mind when it comes to response codes with DNS. If you get something, say, it goes through, the request is fine, usually it comes back, no error. All right. Now, say you get something that's NX domain as an error that comes back. Well, basically that's saying that your, your name doesn't exist. Sorry. Now, you can have a server fail. That's pretty much where you just don't get a response from the server. And... Not to be confused is the final being refused. A DNS server can basically say, nope, and that can happen, of course, because of security, firewall rules, things of that nature, configuration things. Uh, you could even have it internally configured where your LAN refuses requests to certain devices and forces those devices to go out to the interweb. But that's 